draw the three point diagram of the jib grain AB. That's AB, okay? That is the jib grain AB. So we do want to draw the three point diagram of this part of which is pin connected at A. So it is pin connected here and supported by a member link BC. So it's a link here, BC. Link, remember, a solid link and a cable, they both behave in a very similar way. Let me give you an example so that you remember this. That's a wall and this is an eye bolt and I have got a rod here. Okay, it's a rod and I tie a rope here. That's a rope. Okay, and I move the rod up and down. So if I move the rod here, the cable will be in this direction. And the force will always be in this axis. Is that clear? Do you agree with me? Yes, sir. Because it's always in pull. So it's always in pull. For, for, the, for the bar, the force will be in this direction. Now, if you replace the rope with a solid link, it's a link which has got eye connections at the end. And I want to move the, the rod up and down, I can do the same and the link behaves just like a, a rope or cord. And the force will also be along the axis, but there's a slight difference. If it's a cord, for, I'm, I'm talking about this one, so I'm making that again here. If I've got a, ro a, a, a rope connected, so I will always know that the rope is in pull direction. But if, if I replace it with a, 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 a link, it's a link where it is pin connected at the, at the two ends, okay? Then it could be in a pull or push condition. That's the only difference. The similarity is that the force will be along the link along the axis of the rope or the link. But in rope case, it is always in pull, but in link case, it could be push or pull. Is that clear? Okay, so let's move on. So the diagram here is 2Ds. I want to draw the free body diagram of the jib game. So I have to draw the outline of the jib game. So let me draw the outline of the jib game. That's the outline of the jib game. Now I have to put the information on it. So is the force acting downward. So I've got the force acting downward here. I've got the link cable at this point, which is being pressed. So I will apply a force here. I can also do this. But I am doing this at the moment. So that's the force uh, BC. I've got a pin connection here. Sorry, I'll go to BC later. Let me do first the A. That's the A point here. It's a pin connection. So the jib AB has got a weight F, force F acting downward, but the jib. AB cannot move because it is constrained by two reactive forces at B and A. I'm looking at A first. A is a pin connection. So a pin A cannot move in X, Y direction. So I will have a reactive force in the two axes. The pin joint A can rotate in this direction. So there's no reactive moment. Now I look at B. B is again a constraint, it's, it's a support. A and B both are supports. So B is a support and it's a cable. And if I go back to uh, this one, you can clearly see for a link, it there is a reactive force in the direction of the link. Okay? But it can be in any direction. So coming back, 
So the link, uh, there will be a force in the direction of the link, but there won't be any rotation force, rotation reactive moment because it's pivoted at point B. So looking at this, I have created my free body diagram. Again, let me repeat, how did I do it? The very first thing I saw is the force acting on the jib. I was told to draw the free body diagram of the jib crane AB, that is this part. So I will I draw the outline, the, the jib crane, and then and, and kind of cut it off from the surrounding. So I've got the jib crane AB, and I cut it off from the surrounding. Then I apply forces on it, active forces. So there's one active force and that's F acting downwards, so I've done that. Now I'm looking at the reactive force, which is the support. I look at support A. Support A is pivoted. So it means that it's a pivot. So let me go back and see the pivot. Where is the pivot? Give me the pivot. Is the pivot? Yes, I'm looking at, sorry. I'm now looking at this one. So it's a pivot. Pivot clearly tells me that the pivot point uh, joint can rotate, but it cannot move in X, Y direction. So I'll go back. It's a pivot joint. So I will have a reactive force in X and in Y direction. The other support at point B is a link. So let me go back and look at the link. I am looking at the link here, that's here. And the link tells me that there's only one reactive force and that reactive force is in the direction of the, is, is along the direction of the link. And there's no reactive moment because it's pivoted. So I go back and actually say that I've got my reactive force here. As I said, I can even do this, but it makes more sense for me to do this. So this is my free body diagram. So let's look at the, the real one and you will be able to see because you have to put all the dimensions also. Is that clear to everyone? <coughs> yes, sir. Okay, gentlemen, let's have a break for five minutes and we'll continue because I've got only 25 minutes of lecture left. So let's, can we have a break for five minutes? Yes, sir. Okay. okay, so we'll be back in five minutes then. Thank you. Thank you.
इससे मैं बकवास में मान लो सारा दिन Okay, gentlemen, can we continue? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so let's look at the next scenario. Once you draw a fibroid diagram, just the reason why we are emphasizing a lot on fibroid diagram because look, once you've got this thing, it is so easy to apply your equation of equilibrium on it and solve the problem. If 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 you look at look if if you look at this real world scenario and I ask you to find the reactive forces here and here, uh, it is a bit difficult to visualize the forces. But if you convert it into a fibroid diagram. 